In the last lesson, we built the user interface for our Clicker app. In this lesson, we are going to build uh, most of the code uh, for the app itself. But before we do that, let's have one last look at the Firebase database uh, that we had uh, constructed. Here is our Clicker project, and if I click on that um, and click on the overview if you're not there already, uh, notice that the Clicker app now has information that indicates clearly that it is connected to our Clicker app on Android Studio. And you want to make sure that you get this box before you proceed with this next part, which is to write the Java code. Okay, so here we are in our main activity, and what we need to do first is we need to create some variables that tie back to the components on our uh, user uh, interface. Uh, these, these components all over here. So let's just create some of those. Okay, so now I've created variables on the Java side for each of the components on the uh, user interface side. The next thing we need to do is we need to create some reference variables uh, to connect to the Firebase database. Okay, now I've got my database uh, reference variables. Notice that the uh, Android Studio has also done an auto import on the Firebase database references. Uh, this Firebase reference right here is going to point to the root node and then these two are specifically designed to point to each of the child nodes since we'll be using them so often. Uh, technically I don't need these last two. I could just live with this one and then uh, look down at each of the children each time I need to reference them, but it's going to be far more convenient for us to establish separate nodes, uh, references references for each of these nodes because we're going to use them so often in our code. The next thing we're going to need is we're going to need to define our uh, model state variables uh, for our app. And here are the three state variables we're going to use. This uh, agree and disagree, this is going to uh, allow the app to keep track uh, of what's in the database currently and our goal is to have the database number and these variables match continuously. We're also going to use this random thing mostly for debugging. We'll get rid of that at the end. Uh, you'll see where that's used. Okay, so as is our practice, we're going to create a separate initialization method and we're going to call that from inside here and then uh, we're going to write that method now. The first thing we want to do is we want to initialize our state variables. Now, technically, we don't really need to do this because, as you'll see later on, as soon as the app initializes, Firebase will tell us uh, that uh, the database values for agree and disagree have changed. It does that each time you initialize your app. And at that point, uh, we'll have an event listener that will update these variables. But it's generally a good practice to initialize your state variables uh, when you're programming. So we'll just do that right here. The next thing that we need to do is we need to connect the Java variables to the user interface counterparts. And here we've done that for each of the components that we created in the user interface. Uh, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to set up our database references in Firebase. What I'm doing here in this first one is I'm setting the dr underscore Firebase variable to point to the root node and then each of these other references is going to point to one of the child nodes that we established in the database. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to initialize a single question onto the screen and that's going to set the text on the question text view on the user interface. And now we have to get on to the main business of setting up our event listeners. And here we have our button set on click listeners, one for the agree button and one for the disagree button on our screen. And they're extremely simple. All we do is we first pre-increment our internal state variable and then save that variable in the corresponding node in the database. As a reminder, the agree child reference and the disagree child reference point back to these two child nodes of the root node. So we're able to write to these uh, locations directly uh, using our code here. And now the next thing that we're going to add is going to be our uh, value event listeners. Now this is a somewhat complicated topic, but basically what we want is we want Firebase to inform us when one of these two values changes. So we want to create a value event listener for this agree node and a separate one for this disagree node. And the advantage of that is that when someone else updates these values in the database, our app will get uh, informed 
and we'll have an opportunity to read these numbers and load them onto the display. And here we see the value event listener for the agree node and another one for the disagree node. These are a little bit complicated and so uh, it's worth going over. First of all, the uh, add value event listener requires us to also have this on canceled method, which we're not going to be using for this app. The part that we're going to be using is the on data change. And this is the method that gets called when the corresponding node, in this case the agree node, uh, is changed by anyone in the database. So when that happens, we are provided with a data snapshot. And we can look inside that data snapshot to see what the new value is that's been stored in the database and put that into our variable on the Java side. And then we can use that information to update the text of our screen. Notice that we're getting back an integer here and I've added on the double quotes to convert it to a string before we write it to the user interface. And of course we do the same thing for the disagree node right there. Here we are running the app now in the emulator. Uh, there's a number here which I forgot to explain when we uh, wrote the code. And that number refers to this uh, uh, random uh, generation right here. And the only reason we put that in there is so that each time we start the app we'll get a new number here so we'll know that the app has actually restarted. But when we have the final version we're just gonna get rid of that altogether. Uh, you can see that if I press the agree button that the uh, values are updating here and if I press the disagree button updates here and similarly when I hit the reset nothing happens and that is because we forgot to code the reset button let's go back and do that now okay this is the code that we had for the uh, reset button that we had forgotten to code let's uh, run the emulator one more time and now I can increase the agree, the disagree, and now the reset you see shows it to zero. Now what we're going to do is we're going to show the emulator and the real-time database side by side so you can see these values actually changing in the database. Okay, so here is the database right here. Notice that when I increase the agree count over here, it immediately updates it. And then likewise, when I increase the disagree count, it updates it. If I reset it, you can see they get set back to zero. Notice how quickly uh, this database works relative to the button presses and that's one of the nicest features of the Firebase database and why it's referred to as a real-time database. That pretty much concludes the basic features of the app. Now we're moving on to the enhancements.